game before the Boilermakers welcome in South Dakota State to Alexander Field this weekend. Hi, I'm Kyle Charters for This Week in Purdue Baseball, presented by Burke Boilermaker Golf Complex. Golf season is here with the baseball coach Greg Goff and Purdue SID Ben Turner. You do have momentum, certainly, uh, headed to the open week this weekend. You put yourself in, in good position with a couple of weeks in the Big Ten uh, left, and you've done it because you won another Big Ten series, this time against the Scarlet Knights. No doubt, Kyle. It was a huge weekend for us. And, uh, man, I thought our guys just played really well. I thought we put all three facets of the game, the first two games especially, and uh, just really, really pleased with how our guys showed up and competed, knowing what's at stake, and uh, continue to put ourselves in a good position to, to, for the postseason play. Our player guest today is, is Cal Steven, and he keeps getting you off to a good start. Ooh. He did so again against Rutgers. You guys are now 5-1 and one on Fridays in the Big Ten. It really sets you up uh, well for the rest of the week. And now, we saw you beat Maryland the week before uh, and then didn't get the series victory, though certainly winning one game at College Park uh, against the Terps is good. But you follow that up by winning again on Friday against Rutgers and then winning game two as well and then giving yourself a chance to sweep uh, the series. I mean, uh, that just sets you up when you play well on Fridays. It does. You know, I think a lot of times you, you take for granted when, when Cal's out there doing so well. <laughs> um, as the weekend goes, it sometimes turns. And so, you know, it goes to what he does every day. And he sets the tone for us. And being, you know, 5-1 and one on Friday nights, is I mean, that, that's unbelievable, to be honest yeah. with you, for a guy that's never started a college game before this year. Um, just continuing his progression through our program. I'm just so happy for him. And, uh, Coach Rooney and what they're doing every day. I mean, we threw four pitchers in two games against a, a team that's, you know, one of the tops in the league, uh, Kyle. And that, that says a lot. It says a lot, and especially with the wind blowing out and, and all the things that was going on this past weekend. Man, I'm just really, really happy for those guys. And with that wind in the mix, keeping the ball on the ground was big. And, man, they did a great job of it. Your starting rotation, 19 quality innings. They had a 2-3-7 ERA combined. Most important part of that, 27 ground ball outs from your starting pitchers. That's just what the doctor ordered. There's no doubt, you know, and, uh, you know, you got to play good defense behind them, and, and we did that. And, and again, uh, you put the ball on the ground, you got a chance. And, uh, Ben, it was just amazing, you know, especially to watch those guys as the weekend goes along um, and, and watching Kyle there on Sunday get, get in a good groove and get the ball on the ground. And, and we knew that we hit, had to do that type of stuff. So they are. They're, they're doing exactly what Coach Rooney wants them to do. They want them pitch below the string and get you know, ground balls and weak contact, and, um, and they've been really good at it. And it helps the efficiency. They can go deeper in games yes. oftentimes if they're getting more soft contacts or outs quicker in the right. at-bat versus the strikeouts, which are great. But, right. uh, you know, if you rack a lot of them up, it racks up the pitch count as well. Right. Kyle brought this up to me earlier this week, and it hadn't really dawned on me. We've been talking a lot about the consistency of the starting rotation and how – they've been such a big part of the success in Big Ten play. But actually, it's been since 2018, since six weekends in a row, they have the same three guys out there. Right. And you can't take that for granted. <laughs> no. I actually went and looked back. It's, it's since 2009 that we've right. had the entire Big Ten season yep. with the same three starting pitchers. And, again, Blackwell and Iwinski are a huge part of it, too. And That's right. And giving you a chance and already at 10 wins in Big Ten play because of it. There's no doubt. And, that, that again, you know, we are as good as our starting pitching. And um, when when your bullpen's a little depleted and got some guys hurt, um, you know you got to have uh, you got to have quality starts. And those guys do it every weekend. Like I think as we reflect back on the year this summer, I think we'll, we'll really appreciate what they do every weekend. They give us a quality start. They give us a chance. And, and again, I think we won what five, four, five series already this weekend or this this year just because of our starting pitching. Yeah, you mentioned the, the, those guys. I mean, you've you've got to get them to go deeper in games because you do have some questions in the bullpen because of some injuries there. They really just have given you a chance because they can pitch into the sixth, seventh, yes. maybe eighth innings um, and, and give yourself an opportunity. It's awesome. And, again, I think that's probably been the biggest transition, mm -hmm. um, you know, from last year to this year is that pitching more to contact. And we have to because, because yeah. of the depth of our staff. Connor cascanet has been great for you again this weekend. A couple of uh, home runs. He has 20 of his 27 RBI and, and Big Ten play sort of solidified another bat in the middle of the order for you guys. Not only that, but he's getting big hits yes. uh, early in games yep. uh, against starting pitchers. And, uh, you know, I think maybe he's been a little bit of a, t a tone setter offensively for you. He has. You know, he's been a big impact for us. And i um, really, really pleased with, with Connor. And, um, you know, when we recruited him, we felt like he would be a guy that would mm -hmm. compete for that role. And, and, again, more offensively than defensively. And, and he really has. He's really kind of solidified the middle of the order there. Yeah. And, um, you know, Again, if you do that stuff early in games, you give your starting pitchers a chance to get, a, you know, 
a chance to pitch with a lead and, and stuff like that makes a huge difference. But again, I, I think he's just you know continuing to trend in the right direction and, and hopefully can finish strong these next couple weeks. Temperature was down a little bit uh, oh, this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we, know you, we, don't, we know you don't like to even mention that, <laughs> let alone playing it. But it, it did put a premium on you know sort of extra base hits, even with the wind. Yes. Uh, the way that it was. But uh, but you got some. Uh, Joe Stevens had a, a big game uh, yeah. for you. He, we've talked a lot about his defense all season long. He's been very consistent with that. But he's been a consistent bat for you, too, especially in the second half. Uh, of your order he has you know again he's kind of down that middle middle to bottom order and uh he's always got guys on base it seems like yeah. and uh had some huge hits for us this weekend again i can't you know say enough about what ruckers you know they picked to finish second in our league mm -hmm. um a really good organization you know won 40 games last year um and i think they came into alexander thinking they were gonna you know win a series or sweep right. us and uh you know left there a little different than what they thought yeah because the extra base hits were at a premium, you did what you do best oftentimes, find ways to score without a ton of hits. Yeah. Um, you know, 16 walks and six stolen bases for your squad. Meanwhile, your pitchers only give up seven walks over the course of the weekend. You put all that together, yeah. that's an excellent uh, formula for winning baseball. It is, Ben. As you know, you know, you got to, you know, in baseball, we call it the, the freebie war, you know, the margin uh, era deal and um, you know we, we did a really good job this week that's why you beat a good team you know because you're able to handle the baseball when you're on defense and then you're able to put some pressure on those guys and and make them feel uncomfortable and I thought our hitters did a really good job their discipline coach Marsh has did a really good job the last few weeks of getting those guys to to maybe you know shrink the strike zone down a little bit more and our walks are starting to go up and our strikeouts are starting to go down yeah Mike Bolton jr. certainly uh, one of the best eyes on the team leads the team in on base percentage you love that from your leadoff man yes. We, after we filmed the show last week, he goes out and breaks that, that school record yeah. uh, that had stood since 91. That was cool to see. Next up is the uh, single season record. He's only five shy of that. Right. We'll love his chances to be able to get to there, especially the way he's been trending lately. Yeah. He and Kornblum now have basically 50 combined. Yes. So those two have really settled in <laughs> as a dynamic one-two punch, top of the order, hitting one-two. Looking at the start of the year, we were thinking, well, these two could really do something together like that, and here no, they no. are. It's been fun, isn't it? <laughs> I tell you, man, it's... It's fun. It's instant offense for us. Those guys can get on. And I can't say enough about Mike Bolton and him breaking that career record. Uh, love Michael and what he's done for our program. And, and just so happy for him, Ben. Um, hopefully he'll finish that single season and, and get that um, this year as well. But him and Coop have done a tremendous job. Both those guys have really good instincts. Um, I was really excited to see Ben, I mean, uh, see uh, Mike, you know, still third there. Um, so, you know, because most of his stolen bases have been at second base. So just, again, those guys are grinding it out. And, and again, if you get those guys on, it turns into a double or triple when you got a chance to score. You know, we entered the weekend, uh, at least me personally, not knowing whether Aaron Suval was going to be available me too. For, <laughs> for you guys. And, you know, he's been a real warrior. I know he's had a couple of injuries, the most notable uh, being the, the freak action he steps on a baseball yeah. during during BP. and. That thing was really swollen up pretty good on him. You, you put him out there against Maryland. It went okay for him, and I think it's still, you know, bothering him, right. even though he probably wouldn't tell anybody that it was yeah. bothering him. That's just sort of the, the way it seems like he is. But, man, you, you put him out there on, on Saturday, and you wouldn't know there was anything wrong at all. He, right. he pitched great and, you know, was sort of that fourth guy that helped you get that second victory. Yeah, it, we don't get that win if it wasn't for him. You know, yeah. he came in, and, and kind of we extended him. Uh, and we didn't know going into the weekend. We really didn't know what what he's going to be able to do. And uh, you know, he came up to Coach Rooney and said, "Hey, man, <laughs> I'm good. You know, I'm good. I want the ball this yeah. weekend." And and so um, again, I thought his stuff was electric. Yeah. Um, when you're punching those guys out and doing what he did there, those especially uh, when you got when you're playing good teams, uh, you got to have somebody at the end, um, and mm -hmm. because they're so locked in and and you know so offensive minded. And I just thought he just handled them. Unbelievable. Yeah. You've had two guys now who have who have been able to come in late. I mean, that's been sort of the benefit, I guess, of Suval being a little nicked up is that Jackson right. Daly has come in and and uh, been able to close games out for you they've been as good, well. They've been a good one-two punch, you know, Kyle, and, and hopefully we can continue to keep them healthy and, uh, you know, finish strong because we're going to need them down the stretch yeah. as we get in the, you know, the last two weekends and things of that nature. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We had the history with South Dakota State after last year opening against them in Sugar Land. So they're up next for this open weekend in league play. Is this one of the trickier dynamics of building a schedule, is finding this opponent for this open weekend, <laughs> yes, especially yeah. if it's later in the year like this? It, it is, Ben. I think there were, 
maybe three or four teams in Division One baseball that were open this weekend, and um, I reached out to all of them. You know, and, and because we're on the road so much, we we have to play at home. I mean, we you know it'd be silly for us to get on the road right after finals and 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 take off. And so, um, you know, talking with with Coach Bishop at South Dakota State, I saw they were listed as one of those teams, and uh, we were fortunate enough to be honest. We we were very fortunate enough to be able to get them to to come here and, and play in West Lafayette this weekend. As you know, with finals this week, and and um, you know our guys really, you know, with the tough schedule, it, it really worked out well for us. But it is a challenge when the, when the conference puts these games games later in the year. It, it's really a challenge. You, you're very limited to what you can do. You did add a Monday game in. Uh, on the back end of <laughs> the series as well. We and it should make for a unique environment. We've got some schools coming, bringing busloads of kids. And uh, yep. I know <laughs> that uh, anytime you have that kind of game at the uh, basketball arena, it always sounds completely different than the rest of the season. <laughs> yes. So we look forward to that. Uh, you know, that's the one thing uh, as, as, as a baseball coach, um, you know, that when they started doing that a few years ago, um, I was just, I thought that was a tremendous thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so I always wanted to do it. And, um, you know, it worked out to where, we were out of school this coming week after finals, and, and Coach Bishop, you know, wanted to, you know, play a fourth game, and so it worked out well. So I'm excited, looking forward to it. Uh, we also got, uh, you know, Friday night uh, fireworks after the game and stuff. So just a lot going on this week, and hope all of our fans can come out and, and support us. And it's a 70 degree weekend just for you. <laughs> yes, yes, I can't wait. <laughs> it's an interesting weekend too, being out of conference. You positioned yourself really well uh, in the Big Ten. You'll get this sort of break to see how maybe the rest of the Big Ten shakes out yes. during this weekend and yep. see sort of where it leaves you headed into the last uh, two weeks of the season. But you put yourself in a, in a really good spot. We have, you know, I, I'm really, really proud of our guys. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Tell them all, you know, all the time good teams don't get swept. We, in the two road yeah. weekends that we had at Michigan State, which is number two in the league, mm -hmm. uh, had a chance to win that series. Um, Maryland, number one in the, in, yeah. the, in the league. We went over there and, and played really well. And, and, you know, again, one on Friday nights and had a chance to win those series. So our guys are, you know, things are moving in the right direction, Kyle. I'm really yeah. pleased with uh, where, where the program's going and what we're doing and uh, excited to finish this thing. Best of luck, uh, certainly this weekend. Let's take a break. Uh, we'll bring in Cal Steven. We'll talk to his about talk to him about his uh, great starts on Friday night this season. Now he's helped the Boilermakers to get to where they are right now. Uh, Greg, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, we'll take a break. Come back on this week in Purdue baseball. It's warming up and golf season is here. As a member of the Pete Dye Golf Trail, Burke Boilermaker courses offer a variety of experiences and services for you to enjoy year round. Visit PurdueGolf.com for slash Funhouse stay up to date with all the latest deals and offerings, as well as construction and related traffic updates for the new clubhouse. That's purduegolf.com front slash clubhouse. Welcome back to this week in Purdue Baseball. Kyle with Ben and our player guest, sophomore Friday night pitcher, Cal Steven. You've been uh, really good on that day, uh, yeah. to say the least. Five and one in game ones for the Boilermakers in the Big Ten. What has been working for you? Yeah, I mean, I think just sticking to a plan uh, has kind of been the thing. Coach Rooney puts together a great plan, and, you know, we set the whole week, prepare for it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, practice is all about preparation, and then game day is about execution. So just uh, getting in there and being able to make pitches in big moments. So it's been really big. What's been the transition like for you from last season where you, you know, pitched out of the bullpen, but pitched in big roles, big spots out of right. the bullpen uh, to, you know, to being the number one you know, opening game every weekend guy. Yeah, sure. The biggest thing for me last year, so uh, all my time up to it, like I've been a starter. Yeah. So then last year I get put into this different, <laughs> yeah. you know, role. So it's just learning how to embrace the moment and just come into a game, maybe second, third, one out, or mm -hmm. whatever the situation is, and just try and bear down and make the best of it. So that was really like, and then getting with Casey, so. Last year I was pitching maybe two, three times a week. Right. So learning how to just get my body healthy and just keep the tank rolling. So that was really good. And it, it's helped me into this year, whereas now I get a bigger break between my, mm -hmm. my start days. So just being able to really feel good on my game day. So right. that's been great. And obviously starting just, it's where I've been comfortable. Mm -hmm. So being able to get back into that role has been great. and. Um, I think all of our starters, just being able to go deep into games yeah. has what's made uh, our staff so much better this year. Like, that's something we look back on. It's been yeah. really good. 
Yeah, we, we just got done singing the praises of the weekend rotation with Coach Goff, and uh, you, Blackwell, and Iwinski certainly have all fed off each other. Right. How much do you share information about what you learned on Friday going into the next two games? Uh, it's an everyday conversation, yeah. I, I mean, everyone wants to win, so why not, why not help the team? So uh, whether it's batters being on the plate, off the plate, maybe two seems good to this guy, whatever it is. So I think, uh, yeah, communication is great, and, and Coach Rooney kind of helps embrace that. Like, he... <laughs> He's all for it, so yeah. Have you had a favorite performance or most one you're most uh, proud of in conference play? The shutout at Minnesota. You went into the eighth against Rutgers. You know that win at Maryland. They hadn't lost a Friday game at home since before the pandemic. Right. And there's a lot to choose from. Do you mm -hmm. have one that sticks out to you mostly that maybe we overlooked? Yeah, I think yeah the Maryland one probably is my favorite just because their offense is pretty special and being able to hold them to what two four runs whatever mm -hmm. it was in the book, but. Uh, yeah, it was a good night. So I think Maryland was probably what I'd choose from. Yeah, going back to the Michigan State game, you know, the first Friday of conference play, you're on Big Ten Network. Yeah. The first time through the lineup didn't go real well. Right. But something <laughs> changed after that, and it hasn't changed back. Yeah. Couldn't you point to anything going back to that game that, that did change? Right. So the week before, right, uh, I kind of like fell out of my spot. They kind of, we went through this, like, I need to make some adjustments kind of situation. And so I, I took like an off week. I didn't pitch week four against Evansville. Then I come out Michigan State and it was like four spot in the first two innings. <laughs> and I just like, I, I mean, I got mad, like I was pissed. So it was just, uh, just kind of flipped the switch and just kind of like gamer mentality came out. And I think just like being able to find a comfort between like pitch ability and like, go get this guy yeah. has been what's been real special for me. So. I know when I need to make pitches. I know when I need to breathe, uh, and then I know when I can, I can go attack somebody. So, I think just finding that balance between attack mode and pitch ability has been really special for me. Is it correct? It's our understanding that there's been a couple of times, or at least one time, that Greg Goff has come out to get you out in the seventh or eighth <laughs> inning, and your response basically has been no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he, I don't think, uh, really listens to you in those instances. <laughs> uh, is that true? And what I guess what's your feeling? You know, when it is getting a late in a game and you know sort of your time is running out. Right, yeah. Maybe the rumor birds are chirping a little bit. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I never want to come out of a game. Yeah. So, I mean, really nobody does. So, But obviously, pitch count, you know, health, everything's important. So most situations are understandable. But, uh, like, when I'm out there, I want to finish my <laughs> yeah. every time I want to finish. So, yeah. We've had your teammates on this show from Alabama, Arizona, Texas, SoCal, Australia, basically all over. Right. You're from Williamsport, so yeah. you have more of the local <laughs> flavor for us. Um, Purdue, I'm sure, was always in your point of view right. or in your in your scope, so to speak. Uh, we love hearing your stories as we take the bus down to I-74 and we go through <laughs> the Cal Steven tour, Wingate, Attica, yeah. what have you. Um, I mean, was Purdue always where you wanted to end up? I mean, was this kind of... What was the kind of the path? To yeah, right. So as a kid, I mean, like, a whole, our family's a Purdue family. So uh, just whether it was going to baseball games, football games, basketball games, like, we're always around campus. What is it? 50-minute drive. So just, uh, yeah, it's always been real comfortable. And obviously, I love Purdue. So it was uh, uh, an easy decision to make. Like, when I, you know, going through the process, talking to different schools, just Purdue was really comfortable and just something I wanted to, you know, make my life about. You were also the uh, area player of the year in football as a safety and a kicker. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but are you the most accomplished athlete to come out of Seager High School since Stephanie White? Um, <laughs> maybe. Maybe I am. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's a pretty a, tall bar to, yeah, it is. to get to. It is. Yeah. I mean, we've had some good guys. You can check the stats, but maybe I'm up there. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Just you, you have a pitcher BP coming uh, still, but yeah. you've already taken one this year at right. Michigan State uh, a couple of months ago, and you hit a home run yeah. uh, that day, so you got to flash the bat again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I'm sure you did often in high school. Just how, <laughs> how was that? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, getting to get one off Coach Goff, bat yeah. flip a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it feels good. How did yeah. it feel to be the one that helped earn the next pitcher BP, yeah. which is still to come, we're told? Yeah, right. So, actually, that's round two. That's the second time I've done it. I did last year, too. So, uh, yeah, it was good to be So, you hit a home run last year, too? Right, yeah. So, yeah. it was pressure mounting then? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> who else is even in your category among the staff? Then? Oh, there's a handful. DP would get one out. Danley would get one out. Yeah, a handful of them will. I mean, there's a lot of two-way guys in mm -hmm. high school. If you're good enough to be a good pitcher, you're probably good enough to play anywhere on the field, right? Right, right. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, the team had a chance to host the uh, family and Indiana Nitro teammates of uh, the late Terry Badger the third on Friday. They're from Covington, not far right. from Williamsport. Mm -hmm. You played in the Indiana Nitro um, pipeline and family when you were coming up. Uh, what did that connection and what did that mean for you uh, personally to see them at Alexander and to give them at least one night of, of night, you know, good f moments? Yeah, obviously it's really special. I mean, uh, an unfortunate thing to happen, but you know, they're a beautiful family, and uh, for what the Nitro Nation was able to do to, you know what they did on Twitter and the money they helped raise, you know, it's really special. So just to be a part of that here at Purdue and to be able to make an impact on others' lives, you know, it's really special. So um, wish the best for that family and uh, I keep in touch with the fathers. So, uh, and to go out and pitch the way you did after they were there for the first pitch, yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool to, to right. see it all come together karma-wise like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, baseball always finds a way. True. South Dakota State this weekend, is it easy to keep up the momentum being out of conference for one weekend? Yeah, so, I mean, we're looking forward to – we know it's a four-game weekend, so, uh, yeah. you know, between the staff, I mean, it's a lot of a lot of outs we got to get. So uh, we're definitely not taking it light. Uh, just keep keep ahead, steam rolling, and uh, look forward to the weekend. Yeah. Went to Camden Yards, I was told. Mm -hmm. Your dad yeah. clued me in on this one. <laughs> and some cool connections there. Uh Kyle Gibson pitching for the Orioles, and this was when we were at the East Coast two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you played with his cousin and the Indiana Nitro team. Correct. So baseball, again, finds a way. Have you <laughs> been to a lot of pro ballparks? What did you think of Camden Yards? Yeah, so I've been to a handful uh, this summer for, so I guess I've been to uh, Bush Stadium, and then we went to uh, Padres Place, um, the Oakland Place, and Dodger Stadium. So I've been to a handful, and then we were out there, and my dad was like, dude, let's go. Let's yeah, go the, game, the game got moved up. <laughs> yeah, right. Then we get rained out in the seventh inning. Yeah. So you have this huge window, right. and as long as it's not going to rain in Baltimore, why not? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it was great. So I, I think it did rain, but uh, we got there maybe like second inning, so okay. it was all right. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it was cool. They got that street out in right field, so they got the lights and everything. So the environment was really cool. The people we end up sitting next to were Raw, raw about the team, so they're yeah. giving us all the details and stuff. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, the Orioles are, are getting good in a hurry. They have the top ranked uh, farm system, I think, in Major mm -hmm. League Baseball, so you'll want to play them now or sooner than later <laughs> because they're going to get good in a hurry here, yeah. I think. So, all right, uh, we close things out with personal preferences. We just want to learn more about you, Cal, and as I always say, there are no wrong answers, but you do got to pick a number between 1 and 17 this week. Let's go 12. 12. Sport other than baseball you most enjoy playing? Yeah, football. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. Fair enough. Yeah, um, yeah. Some favorite moments from the Seeger High School football domination? Um, all right, so round one of sectionals, we were playing a, a conference team, and it was a, like a one-score game or something like that, kind of coming down the wire. And we were just running this, like, basically it was like me right or me left. and uh, But we switched it up. It was like... So I like kind of run to the right, but it's like a dump play, and the ball should have been intercepted. We were all like on the twenty, <laughs> and so I'm like running right as a dump, and like the safeties just kind of like cross each other, and the ball snuck through. It was like seventy yard touchdown. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that like sealed the game. It was pretty special. <laughs> yeah. Nice. What year was that? Uh, that was my senior year. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Between one and seventeen, don't pick twelve. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. His number. Foreign country you'd most like to visit. Hmm. Somewhere warm and nice in a vacation <laughs> spot. Okay. Uh, maybe like Jamaica would be great. Nice choice there. Yeah. Maybe go see uh, Joe Stevens in Australia <laughs> sometime. Yeah. yeah, go surfing. All right, last one between 1 and 17. Don't pick 12, don't pick 14. Uh, we'll go 8. 8. All right, your film favorites category. And the easiest way to think about this one, if this person is associated with the film you are or show, you are more likely to watch it. Actor, actress, director. You can answer all three or just give us one. We'll go actor, Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner? Yeah. Would not have expected kinda, that. Kind of like classic kind of Sure. Deal, Does that go back to Field of Dreams? They're all, they're all, Bull all the Durham. baseball movies. Yeah. Yeah. Bull Durham's a big one, yeah. He is yeah. a baseball big man fan. and has yeah. been a lot of sports movies. So right. I did not expect that one, but yeah. that's why we asked these questions. There you go. <laughs> so you guys making a push toward the Big Ten tournament in Omaha. That's got to give you guys a... Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, a lot of momentum, a lot of incentive to, to go out there and continue playing well, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're hanging in there, and uh, we know the Big Ten weekends. You know, that's what we live for. It's what we got to go. So, yeah. 
uh, just giving it all we got and just gonna make that push. So. Yeah. Well, best of luck uh, this Friday. Yeah. We know what day you work on. That's uh, right. That's right. <laughs> work happens on Friday. Thanks, Cal. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right, that'll do it for our show for uh, this week. Of course, back uh, again next week as we get back into Big Ten play. For Ben Turner, Cal Steven, the coach, Greg Goff, I'm Kyle Charters. Thanks for watching. This is This Week in Purdue Baseball, presented by Burke Boilermaker Golf Complex. Golf.